Hello sports fans and this is Play It Right TV. I'm Kenito Henson and we're very honored that we have with us today, first off, Deputy Speaker Congressman Eric Martinez, formerly the House Committee Chairman for Youth and Sports. And we also have Mr. Anil Buksani, the uh, Chairman of uh, Sona Corporation, which distributes a wealth of uh, sports equipment and accessories of ASICS, the official outfitter of the Philippine Olympic team, the Southeast Asian Games, and uh, also the distributor of molten basketballs, Mikasa volleyballs, all the best products in sports that you can find. And well, we're here in Valenzuela, and with us, uh, Congressman Martinez, we're seeing here a lot of themed basketball courts. Right now, we're in a place called Bahay Alamat. What was the vision that you had, Congressman, in thinking about producing these themed basketball courts in Valenzuela? Well, Kinito, first and foremost, welcome to the city of Valenzuela. And uh, I claim this as the basketball capital of the Philippines, unless someone would contest me at that. <laughs> uh, I thought of this when I started on my first term as congressman in the 2nd District of Valenzuela. Uh, putting uh, world-class basketball courts like this would entice our uh, children, the youth, to perform well and uh, play the game that we all love, the most popular sport still in the country, basketball. And uh, adding spice to it is these kinds of uh, uh, pictures that we have. Uh, I just would like uh, to bring that sense of history about the game of basketball among our children. Because uh, we all know children, they love the, to play the game, but when you ask them of the history that goes yeah. with the sport, especially Philippine players, they don't know nothing about the NBA, a little, but uh, with this, as they play, when they see all those designs that we put in here, it gives them a sense of uh, impression of uh, being inspired and uh, knowing history the history of the game of basketball. And talking about history, Congressman, I notice here that you're an exhibit of the Philippine team that played in the first Olympics where basketball was introduced, 1936 in Berlin. Berlin. Philippines took fifth place. That was the highest finish ever to this day yes. of an Asian country in the basketball competition of the Olympics. And we have here Coach Chito Calvo, the only Filipino in the FIBA Hall of Fame, Senator Ambrosia Padilla, all the players who played on that very historic team. And then over here, Congressman, you yes. have Gabe Norwood dunking on Luis Scola. Tell us why you chose that picture and why we have this tribute for Gilas. Madaling araw nun. It was, how do you put madaling araw? Uh, very early in the day. Very early in the day, I was watching it live on TV. Jason Castro. On the break, gave that bounce pass to, to Gabe Norwood, and, but Scola was fronting him, and he just posterized <laughs> an NBA star at that. Yes, a Filipino posterizing one of the NBA stars would give us that sense of uh, pride. Yeah, we could do it, and we could compete against the best among the best. Argentina, a powerhouse. Yes. Being posterized, cola posterized. <laughs> so just to immortalize that moment and for children, for all generations to come, it will always be put in here sa bahay alamat and it will be remembered for all years to come. Nor would posterize cola. <laughs> well, Mr. Buxani, your family has been involved in sports for the longest time. Tell us how long, both on a personal basis, you've been involved in sports and also on a corporate basis. Well, the company was established in 1960 by my father and ever since then I still remember him putting all the kids in the pool at six months so that was his job he said basically all the kids in the pool and he was the one who really you know ushered us into sports so since six I started playing football so I played for a lot of teams I played for my own university and eventually you know after university you know it's like a bee to honey right? I want to go and do sports I want to do sports business that's how we started you know, eventually we met, you know, so many great people who supported sports like yourselves. And off we go to the next millennium. Hopefully, you know, uh, 
uh, helping to promote sports in the country. Specifically basketball, Mr. Buxani. Tell us about your involvement in that sport that we all love. Uh, I remember being in shorts and my father taking me uh, to the first ball game of the PBA. And I remember meeting the commissioners and meeting a lot of the players at that time. And, you know, I had a favorite team. Um, and I watched it, you know, almost every weekend with my father. And uh, that went on to me uh, participating as a youngster, as a volunteer for the world championship that the Philippines had in 1978. And uh, I enjoyed that. I brought my friends from school. We had our basketballs autographed by everybody. So that was my first foray into understanding and appreciating sports. Then on we went you know, to play football for uh, you know, a lot of the teams. And my brother did it too. My sister is a good swimmer. And I'm happy to tell you my children are very much involved in, in sports as well. And hopefully someday my grandkids will be there too. And what about today? How are you involved in basketball specifically? And why are you here in Valenzuela speaking with the congressman? Well, I, had, I heard this great program that Congressman Eric had, you know, and I said I had to see it for myself. So, you know, we're already on the second gym, and I'm already, like, with my jaws <laughs> dropped. Like, how could he manage this, you know? Um, and from a local government level, I can see it's really good. So I think I'm happy to say, Eric, if you have us, we want to partner up with you. We have this new product for three-on-three -three called Molten B+. And, and I've come here to show that to you. And it's a great program. It's end-to-end -end training. It's equipment. Of course, it's the balls. And, uh, you know, it's there to take us to another level of performance. So my, my participation is hopefully to bring our performance levels higher by bringing the right equipment to the right people at the right time. Perfect. And here we have a picture of our Philippine team, 2014 Gilas Filipinas and Jimmy Alapag. And Congressman, may I ask, ito po mga legends na napili natin. Did you personally choose who these legends would be whose photos are here on this wall? I think the greatest players in Philippine back, those are the top 40 named by the PBA okay. uh, some years back, I think. So those are the pictures selected there. But uh, this 1954, 1973, 2014 Gilas and the Berlin uh, Olympics, are really milestones in our basketball history as a nation. So, as the word Bahay Alamat, these are legends that should be forever remembered. So, those are my decisions to put 54, 73, 2014, and 36 Berlin. Let's go over to this display, our exhibit of the 1954 team. And we all know, Congressman, that this was the team that took the bronze medal in the World Cup in Rio de Janeiro, the highest finish Ever, ever of any Asian team in the World Cup of Basketball and we all know of course 2023 Philippines will be hosting the World Cup of FIBA. Uh, please tell us congressman about the 1954 Philippine team. I, I just did my research about uh, basketball and Kaloy Loy Saga really comes to mind the big difference and when I did my Google of uh, King Kaloy this 1954 achievement of uh, uh, the big difference really comes up. So, uh, just for our children to remember, we've been Tito Tony still alive, and uh, we even put a, a jersey it's of jersey him, yeah. the number 13, yeah. the number uh, he wore in Rio in 1954. And Tito this, Tony actually is Antonio Henato. The, as you were saying, the only living member of this 1954 team. And maybe we can take a look at that jersey, the jersey. that was retired by Congressman Martinez in ceremonial rites. Yeah. Dito po sa Bahay Alamat. But can you please tell us ano po nangyari and how that happened? 1954 is special and it should be forever remembered. Children would, you ask, 10 children playing basketball. You know, the 1954 team, no one could relate to that. So, Tito Tony's uh, retirement of Jersey here is not just about him. It's about this entire Philippine team giving sweat and blood for this country, producing the best result. Third place 
Third place. Unbelievable. Third place. In the world. In the world. At that time, you got they got Bill Russell at the time. Yes. yes. Those guys. Congressman Eric, I also noticed in the gym, you have names of legends on the bleachers as well. Yeah. No, I, I, this is a... Uh, ongoing project I'm going I'll try to put all the names of players who one way or another been known in basketball that's the signature of Willie Miller right. there at that uh, seat, the seat yeah. he played here a month two months ago so I made Willie Miller sign that, oh. uh, that seat there maybe we can take a look at that a seat uh, that was signed by Willie Miller so this is just I call this not just a basketball court, it's more of a basketball museum. That's that's really the goal. A basketball court with a museum so that history will forever be remembered. I'm sure some of the kids in Dallas will want to be, you know, at least uh, want to be one of them someday. So I can imagine what inspiration it brings. Hopefully, hopefully. Well, Valenzuela has produced uh, some basketball stars. Yes. Jerry Esplana, the Esplana. The most notable. Mm -hmm. Rudy Lalota. Yes, Rudy Lalota. Yeah. And younger than two. Billy, Haba Haba, Barrientos. Ah, Barrientos. Five three. Five feet three. Long forgotten, but here forever. So when kids play here, somehow they'll realize, oh, that's how rich basketball is. in another theme basketball court in Valenzuela. Kong Eric, this is called the House of Jawo. Bahay. Ang bahay ni Jawo. Bahay ni Jawo. <laughs> Paano ho na-conceptualize yung court na to and why the tribute to Sunny Jaworski? No more explanation about the, <laughs> <laughs> the, the living legend. <laughs> Never, Mr. Never Say Die. And, uh, it's but just appropriate to put up something to remember that greatness in Philippine basketball. Ang bahay ni Chawo tops them all. So that's what comes to mind. Living legend. Probably one of the greatest who ever played this game. Kung Eric, ito po mga pictures ni uh, Sonny Jaworski playing. These are all paintings. Sino pong gumawa nito? Because they're they're beautiful paintings. Local artist, Kinita. Uh -huh. uh, we just discovered them doing some stuff and then join us and let's do some how long did it take them to finish these uh, I think drawings two, two weeks two weeks three weeks on those drawings and aside from that you could see that the highlights of uh, the Big J's career as a player and uh, as a national team member Hall of Famer Hall of Hall, and the jerseys from UEE -E Comeralco Toyota and Ginebra Congressman Eric, we didn't even know that he wore number five when he was Me playing too. for you. I just noticed it right now. <laughs> we like, wow, it. Yeah. Number, number five. five. And tell us also about the design of the court because not only 
do you make sure that the flooring of every court in Valenzuela is made of really strong wood, strong hardwood, but this design where it says, Ang Bahay Ni Jawo, who designed this? Because frankly, it's beautiful. Yeah. Me and my friend. Really? We just try to make a design, redesign, and build the best idea we could decide on. So that design, Bahay Ni Jawo, was the finished product. Oh, Mr. Buxani, what do you think of this uh, tribute to Jaworski? I know he's one of your favorite yeah, players yes, he is. because you he didn't is. mention it earlier, he but is. you did say that you had a favorite PBA team. Yeah. And I'll say that it was Toyota. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> you read my mind, Benito. And honestly speaking, I took a uh, liking to that team because of the legend. I just enjoyed the way he played. He was like a real powerhouse of basketball. So that's why. Me and my brother, we the ferocity that goes with it, the intensity. Wow. Well, I have to ask you, what is your feeling, uh, Mr. Buxani, that you're here in the Bahay ni Jawo, and because of your loyalty to him, that you've been a fan all these years, you must be feeling a sense of what? Uh, nostalgia. Of nostalgia, yes, and, and also a sense of appreciation for right. what he has done for the Philippines in the sport of basketball. Well, my heart's pumping, I'll tell you that. <laughs> you know, memories are going through my mind. You know, some of these scenes that I'm looking at here and even noticing that he had the number five before the number seven, it's all news to me, you know. So I'm trying to recollect, because it's been many, many years since I watched him play. And now that I look at some of these images, I can almost understand, like, that must have been in that game, and that must have been, in, oh, we all know he was where he was in this game. So even these pictures bring a lot of memories back, back to life. So it is indeed a great tribute to, to the living legend. The Baron in Vincent is driving. You got the silhouette of his face behind his image. Uh, his expressions, you can almost, you know, it takes you back. It's like a blast from the past. Congressman Martinez, this is the first basketball community court yeah. that you built in Valenzuela. Tell us a little bit about this court and its history. Uh, it was five years ago. Uh, this barangay is called Barangay Genti de Leon. But uh, formerly, some years back, long years back, it is called Barangay Pugad Baboy. Mm -hmm. So it's a wild boar. Mm -hmm. uh, so might as well put the logo as the Bulls. If the it's, this is a Chicago Bulls inspired court, if they have the Bulls, we have the Bulls. Of course, uh, the highlight of the court is arguably the greatest, the goat MJ twenty three. And uh, this was five years ago, and uh, still looking good. Both, both many children going to this place, and uh, we also have a statue of Samboy Lima outside. As we all know, he's, he's our version of MJ. If they got MJ in America, we have Skywalker in, in the village. And of course, Chicago has the United Center. Yeah. And this is called? Creative Mind Wild Center. <laughs> <laughs> and this is Congressman Martinez's tribute to the Skywalker, Sam Boylin. A tribute to the NBA champion, champion. Golden State Warriors, Congressman Martinez. Napakaganda nito ng uh, basketball court dedicated to the Warriors. But this was made before the Warriors yes. won this season. Yes. Tell us about it. Uh, this generation would always be remembered as uh, the Golden State Warriors era, and uh, might as well put up a court like this also for the greatest shooter who ever lived, who ever lived. Step Curry, and uh, the highlight of the court is, of course, the mural of the great Step Curry. And uh, at the back, you can see uh, Draymond, Kevin Durant, and Clay Thompson, and those uh, memorabilia of uh, Golden State Warriors lore history. So this is it. This is the uh, 
court of the champions, the Golden State Warriors. So, Congressman Martinez, I noticed here on this wall that you have pictures of some of the greatest Golden State players ever. I see Nate Thurman, Jerry Lucas, Sarunas Marcellanis, Ralph Sampson, Jamal Wilkes, Mitch Richmond, Rick Barry. How are you able to put these pictures together? Just Google. Okay. <laughs> and, and I really, f I know, that, uh, that love for the game would really make you look for things, information about, that's how I it's put up, Google and the love for the game. And for the team, the Golden State Warriors, my favorite NBA team. <laughs> and, and my dad. Yeah. My now, dad's favorite. We've seen a lot of courts. We've seen the Chicago Bulls court. Now we have uh, the Golden State Warriors court. In our next stop, we're going to be treated to probably one of the most emotional yeah. courts ever built here in Venezuela. Stick around for that. Hey, Kenito, I got a question. Uh, before we go off to the next place, mm -hmm. I got a question for Kong Eric. And you can answer this now or you can answer this later, okay? How do you know what you know before it happens? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't know. Any conspiracy theory about that thing? No way. I don't know. And we will tell you about that particular situation on our next visit to this court. Go. And now we are here at the house of Kobe. And Kong Eric, when this was inaugurated, Tell us about the circumstances surrounding that very memorable location. It was a Sunday, January 26th of uh, 2020, an afternoon. And uh, right before the end of the inauguration program, I mentioned it live on video recording, calling on the greatest Laker of all time, Kobe Bryant. When you get back to Manila, please visit the city of Valenzuela. We made the house for you. We call it the house of Kobe. I even repeated that Kinito three times before the ceremony started. And lights off, we went home. After seven hours, we heard the news. Same day in America, 26th of January, Kobe Bryant died Sunday. So that makes this uh, whole uh, thing somehow uh, special. special and in a way that uh, the same day they lost the great Laker in America, but we made a home for him here in the Philippines. Maybe he really loves this country, considering those circumstances. That's the story of the House of Kobe that makes it so memorable. Kong Eric, this has become like a shrine yeah. for those who not only love Kobe Bryant, but also who love the game of basketball. Yeah, right after that, uh, ours, after that uh, news that Kobe died, Many people from all walks of life, Valenzuela and the neighboring cities, even provinces, flocked to this place. They had the wall in front of this court became a memorial wall, writing their all their intentions and prayers for Kobe. And people even from California, Phil Ams, Balikbayans, they they heard about the news. There's a house of Kobe. They went here, other places. If not for the pandemic, this could have been more. Uh, the most popular court in the Philippines, but people will really go here and see for themselves the House of Kobe. But earlier, Mr. Bugsani, you were asking about the premonition or what made Congressman Eric somehow foresee what was in the future. Did you, did you actually get any feeling of that? Or was this just a tribute to Kobe because he was a, a sportsman or a basketball player that was close to your heart? No idea and no intentions of anything. It's just a tribute for probably one of the fiercest competitors this game has ever seen. All-time great Kobe Bryant. It's just sad that at the same day, hours before, after uh, that tragic event happened in California. It's, it's indeed a great tribute. I mean, when we came out, we saw a lot of messages to Kobe. We see on the wall that there are murals, there are messages that you have for for everybody regarding his life and his accomplishments. Now, Congressman Eric, you have here the pictures of some of the greatest Lakers players ever. And who chose these uh, these players? And if you can help us by naming who these Lakers greats are. I'll try my best. Jamal Wilkes, Chamberlain, uh, Jerry West, Jabbar, Magic, Shaq, Worthy, Mike and Goodrich. 
Elgin Baylor, Baylor who was one of, of the best yeah. Lakers ever. Baylor. But such an amazing tribute, uh, Congressman. Pero, itong fort pa ito, gamit. Gamit? Gamit na gamit. Okay. It's a community court, all for free, for the people of uh, District 2 Valenzuela, Barangay Caruatan. And uh, because of the mystique that goes now with this house of Kobe, this is one of the favorite courts of uh, our Kabola, mga kalaro sa basketball. And you've accomplished so much in uh, Valenzuela, Congressman Eric. You've uh, created 12 basketball courts, all of them with a specific theme. And I'm sure all the people of Valenzuela and now all the people of the Philippines can get to appreciate what you've done here through this video we're doing for Play It Right TV. My question to you, Congressman, is what is next in your sports agenda for Valenzuela? Just build, build more courts uh, for the children, for the young, and hopefully we, we discover the next uh, phenom or freak of nature that would make this country proud and make Valenzuela proud and make uh, this barangay proud. Because it all starts here. The dream of our young starts with these courts. So just go on, move. Do more, more, more. And Venezuela has produced a lot of young stars still very active. CJ Cancino yeah, CJ, and Albon Pasotros. And there are some upcoming players that we have now. And uh, hopefully there will be more with these uh, facilities available for the young. Well, Mr. Buxani, what you've seen here in Venezuela, mm -hmm. this certainly warms everybody's heart. Yes, and I'm sure it has warmed your heart. Yes. How do you intend to support Congressman Eric's plans for Valenzuela in the field of sports. Well, while we were in the car on the way here, I asked Eric, I said, you know, if he'll allow us to partner with him for the Moten B Plus. So it's a new product. It's not out in the market yet. Um, it can be used for grassroots all the way to professional uh, players. And, you know, I asked the Congressman if he would allow us to partner by putting these systems in. And these are new technology systems that will bring the level of play a little bit higher. There's surfaces, there's courts, there's shooting machines, there's new balls that you know the kids can use and develop their skills to become a little bit more hardcore basketball players. So from what I've seen here today, Kinito and Kong Eric, I'm just totally floored. I have to say that. You know, and I, I'm saying for the kids in your district, the kids that are in Bulacan, they're they are lucky to have you at the helm of all this. And we can't wait to see more of the projects that are going on. Thank you very much again for Play It Right TV. This is Kenito Hanson in behalf of Mr. Anil Buxani and Congressman Eric Martinez. Maraming salamat po. So the logo at the middle is not just uh, something we put up. It's not an idea of ours. It's part of Kobe's Kobe's crown. No. Tattoo. Tattoo here. Look at the tattoo. That's Kobe's tattoo. Mm -hmm.